Welcome to the Q&A for True Things at the 46th Annual Toronto International Film Festival. My name is Leanne Kunji and I'm a part of the programming team here at TIFF. And I'm so excited to be joined here today by director Harry Woodliffe and cast members Ruth Wilson and Tom Burke. Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. And Yes, and congratulations on this phenomenal film, uh, Harry, this incredible second feature of yours, and truly one of um, you know the most affecting films I've seen this year. So uh, I really wanted to kind of start from the beginning um, and just how this, this film and this project came to you. So this film is based on Deborah K. Davies' novels, Two True Things About Myself. Uh, so who first came across the novel and what about it compelled you to adapt? <laughs> so um, I was doing a play with Jude Law a number of years ago and he was being sent some material by his agent and this book was one of them and he gave it to me he said Ruth there's anything in it worth adapting and I read it and I loved it and I thought yeah there's definitely something here and what appealed to me um, was the character she felt like a really modern messy woman who makes bad decisions um, I also love the kind of the subjective nature of the film, of the book itself. It read like a series of confessions, almost. So it was a really, it was a really feminine perspective of this story. I also thought the uh, story itself was universal. It's like a rite of passage to have a bad relationship. So I thought that was something that felt really relevant. Um, and then it only became the film it is now once we got Harry involved, who writer and director Harry. So then it what it is now. That's it. So Harry, I mean, uh, when you got the, the book and you're adapting it to the screenplay and, and really creating uh, what we th this film, uh, what was it that stood out to you about this story and how did you want to create these characters visually? I think you're <laughs> oh no! no. <laughs> we were doing so well. We were so close. <laughs> oh, Tom! Hey! Hey! <laughs> Get over to my house. You're back. You're back now. Okay, let's go. Let's go. What? <laughs> Can you hear the feeling that you have when you're in a relationship that isn't going well? and that you feel consumed by it and disorientated by it. And, um, and I think it's not just a female thing, I think it's a male thing as well. Although I think there's something very female about um, uh, the way we're like a moth to a light with these relationships. Um, I think we learn things from them and, and come out a different person. And I think that's also very female, a way of exploring who you are through um, the relationships that you have. Um, but it was the atmosphere of the book, really, rather than the nuts and bolts of the story. Um, the, the book's different. The book has domestic violence in it. We all agree that in a film, the students have any domestic violence, it becomes a, a film about domestic violence because it's such a profoundly, uh, a, a profound thing. It, it needed to be... Uh, it, uh, we needed to take that away, in a way, for, to let the other parts of the, um, the narrative... Um, function well and so we we um i focused on yeah that just that feeling that you have um and i loved it loved the atmosphere of the book and like um ruth says said the character she just feels like us i think mm -hmm. absolutely and so tom when did you first get involved with the project and, and what attracted you to this character of the mysterious blonde um, I think the fact that um, there was just a, an interesting journey there and um, yeah I mean it, I was a bit worried at one point it was a bit of a repeat from something else I'd done but it did feel like the character did a kind of 360 in a way um, and then it was really working with Harry and Ruth that was the appeal. And, and that's it. I think there's such an intimacy in your performances that I, I say is one of the most authentic that I've seen this year. And I say that with 
complete conviction. Um, and it's not only for those moments of being like completely consumed by the desire of someone in front of you, but also in the slight gestures and, and those words that really wound um, that, you know, someone, whether you know them really deeply or not can, can really affect a person. So I, I know I'm thinking a lot about the lake scene. So how did you all work together um, to create these really authentic moments? As far as I re remember, we, we sort of started off by, um, well, obviously Ruth was developing the, was, was there from the beginning. So we were having lots of conversations all the way through um, about, about the character. And then um, as when we got together and we had some kind of rehearsal time, the three of us, and I found that really difficult because I was kind of talking, I found it difficult to talk to Tom and talk to Ruth together. I felt like I had to talk to them separately because I felt like, it was like I had to have private conversations about what me and Blonde thought of of of, of um, Kate and what me and Kate thought about Blonde. Um, and uh, it, uh, I thought that was really interesting that it was actually better when we were separate. Um, and Ruth, uh, we had lots of conversations, right, just I remember building up to it, sitting on uh, various benches in Ramsgate, kind of talking about who this was and feeling like how hard it was to kind of grasp her before you began um, because there's so much she's never sort of saying what she means and I and I think with Tom for me what I remember is trying to grasp why his his badness really like why he behaved badly and um, Tom sort of saying well why you know and in his efforts as well to um, not make him to make him three-dimensional and um, and, co and and complex rather than just someone who's just not nice um, which I thought Tom did incredibly well. I thought also um, what we worked on, what I found, usually I can pitch, I usually try and pitch a character often because you have a journey and you have a, you know, and sometimes that works. But in this, it, I found that was detrimental to the process. Mm -hmm. That actually it was all because it's so intimate and it's so subjective and it's just about being present and being observed by the camera that you had to do as little and not dictate anything. You just had to let the scene sit and be. And so the more we allowed that and the more Harry allowed that on the set and asked for that on the set, and actually the more I got used to being observed in that way, it felt sort of really freeing actually. Um, but it was also the DP, Ashley was amazing because she also would watch the scene and look for more intimate moments that were happening between us that a camera might not often pick up on. So the camera would go down to the fingers, fingers entwining or would, you know, so stuff like that we were doing, he would find that as well when watching the scene. For example, that scene at the, um, that happens at the lake scene and my fingers entwine around his back and, that, and that's her capturing that as well. Mm -hmm. And her and Harry deciding to get that moment. Um, so I think that it's a combination of all of us working like that in the writing early on and lots of discussion and then obviously on the day and then all the other creative teams coming in and finding the intimacy. And it's really, truly intimate, this film, I think, in that way. That's what it feels, doesn't it? Absolutely. Tom, what about you in terms of working with um, with Ruth and Harry and creating these scenes? Um, well, yeah, I, I think um, I, when I read the script, I thought there was a lot of ambiguity in it, particularly with Blonde, and I thought that was a, I thought that was the strength of that uh, side of the story in a way, um, and yeah, and I think I think there were like I think you know I think Harry um, very much was initially coming at it from uh, Kate's point of view, uh, understandably, because that's the way the book is written. And then, so it was, that was an evolution of, the, you know, so I think like, when, I think when I we were doing the scene in the kitchen when he's looking for stuff in the cupboard, um, uh, it was initially like, I said, well, he could be looking for anything, couldn't he? Uh, and initially, and then Harry said, no, he's definitely looking for food, definitely looking for food. And I thought, okay, well, that's that's definitely what Kate thinks, but I don't think that's what that, Blonde is about. But at I all. think that's what I thought as the as the writer, like that's what I decided in in the scene. But also, um, what was I going to say there? But I her? think whether a writer knows exactly what they've written is a whole other debate. 
And I think that's what we keep saying. Why can I keep saying there's no truth as well? And we can all disagree. So I was yeah, like, exactly, yeah. Tom can think what he thinks is going on, and Ruth can think what she thinks, and I can think what I think. And as long as I'm watching it and feeling like I can see what I think coming through, even if they're not playing that. That was quite a sort of revelation to me, I, I think. I don't think you all have to agree. You know, you get sort of caught up in conversation. It's just like, we'll just do it. And then they would do it. And I'm like, I can see what I want to I want to see, whether Tom thinks there's something else in the cover. But I, I also think that's the nature of the piece. Like, you know, yeah. in terms of what people come for, what they get out of it, and whether they respond more to Kate or to Blonde or, you know, and who they have sympathy for at which moment. So I actually think that's added and lends itself to the nature of the film where it's it's um, ambiguous and also everyone's complicated and everyone, you know, you at times you're with or against the same person, you know, it's like, so that's great. <laughs> we all were doing different things and somehow it came together. Yeah. I think on a bigger, on a sort of wider level, it reflects the notion, the, the story, that thing of, well, what, what, is he in love with her? Is he in love with her? Is he not? Is it, and it's like, it's something you always go back to and you go, I just know they weren't, you know, I've come to terms with that. But, well, maybe they were. What do you, you know, what do you think? And we often sort of talked about whether he was in love with her or not. And we, we've all got our own kind of theories. And it, and it, and I think there is no truth to these mm -hmm. things. There's no truth. It's everybody's perspective on, on it. Um, I, yeah, I wholeheartedly agree with that. Just in terms of what we're bringing to the, when, you know, to the screen when we're watching too, all the experiences, that we're kind of taking from uh, what is what you're showing, and it is that that micro that's shown in the macro, right? Like this very personal story set in Ransgate of all places that I think really has this universality and uh, and like potential to connect with a lot of people from different walks of life because maybe we've all had that bad boy in our past so that you know we're we're thinking of. Um, did you kind of draw from personal experiences in the writing and in the performances here? Well, I've never been in a bad relationship. It was really cathartic. And I really liked in the, um, I really like writing the, the, the scene in the pub where he's really horrible to her. Because I was going to be him in the scene. I was like, okay, I can see, I can see how you can get hooked to this. <laughs> Just this sort of power, and um, it, it was it was quite fun, kind of. Um, that there are you know there are a couple of lines I've stolen from my from my real life. Um, um, uh, yeah, yeah. I think there was loads of we had loads of discussions, didn't we, Harry? We sat down and we shared lots of anecdotes of just you know experiences we've had, um, but also even actually in the most intimate moments, I thought the stuff all of Kate on her own in her house. I thought that's going to be really honest and truthful. What are the weird things that you do on your own that everyone does, you know, that is kind of so honest and truthful. So that's, we we're looking for it in every moment, really finding what we do <laughs> and putting it on the screen. So yeah, there's quite a lot of probably all of us in there somewhere. Definitely. And, and Tom, I want to know, did you find um, uh, um, yourself in Blonde ultimately? You, you, yeah. yeah. In, yeah, in I mean, his goodness as well as his badness. Well, I think, what was the last bit? In his goodness as well as his badness. I mean, he's not... Yeah, I mean, I tried not to think of it in those terms. I mean, to me, he was somebody who was living a completely improvised life, which is what a lot of people do, um, whether that's right or wrong. Um, and so at any given moment, he was kind of... I don't want to say doing the best he could do, but 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 because there was... I think that enough desperation in there to, to do crass, awful, mindless things. But yeah, he's he was always reaching for something. Um, and that's, that's the only way I could think about it, really. Um, and so for my last question, I, I will have to say that we love a good needle drop moment uh, in, in any film that we see. And so we have to talk about the dance scene. Oh, yeah. The PJ Harvey rid of me, please. Um, you know, choosing that song and that, that scene, uh, talk, talk us through it. <laughs> How did that come about? I can't really. Funny, because that that song, I was sort of grappling with the with the latter part of the of the when she the, the bit from when she leaves the party 
and then goes into town and then go goes to to the club i was sort of grappling with how that all fitted together and i kind of played that song just to sort of like read the script and take me through all those sections i felt like there was something about it that just that kind of beat that it starts with that really made it there was something just really clicked and then and then we had lots of late night as we built, built up to the dancing of, of Ruth going, what do you want me to dance to? And me going, this is Ruth going, I can't dance to those. Yeah. <laughs> That's impossible to dance to. Yeah. That's like, that was <laughs> as the panic kind of like, and we, yeah. So as we built up, through, and then I had um, a sort of few tracks in there. And then, and then that one just kind of, kind of stuck. But it was like, we, you know, maybe in the edit, I was going to change it or, but um, I think we just sort of fell in love with it. Yeah, and I think on the day as well, because it was really towards the end of our Ramsgate shoot, and in between we'd shut down for COVID, so we'd done a week of filming, then had like months off, uh, and then it was the end of the Ramsgate stuff, so it was all kind of building to an end, uh, to the end of the film. I None of us have been in a dance party for <laughs> time and so when we, we were shooting in this kind of awful like no lovely club in Ramsey and um, <laughs> and we, Harry was playing this and I remember it was for me it was just easy I loved it just me going mad on a dance floor and I don't know if we decided I remember during it wasn't it, it was like we'll have some with people there and some of her on her own and we hadn't quite decided how it was gonna be um. I remember just looking through the monitor and at one point, for some reason, Ruth kind of came away from the crowd and she was a bit on her own. I was like, wow, that looks brilliant. That looks brilliant. And and then, yeah. And and then just said, Ruth, do you want to do it? Yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was really good because it kind of finalized all those dream sequences. It became in itself another part of that. And so it's, um, but no, it's it's brilliant and it's lovely to, well, it was great to do and great fun to do on the day. Absolutely. Well, I could really talk about this film for another, you know, hour or so, but I, I do want to thank you all for your time and really congratulations on such an incredible film, True Things. Um, and we can't wait for audiences in Toronto to see it. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs>